Meghan Markle here. Today is February 4th, 2022. It is 12 p.m. My husband just stepped out to take care of some stuff and I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six articles that I sort of bookmark, never really got a chance to get to them. So while he's out, took over the computer and then I'm gonna try to finish before he comes back and then return the computer back. Uh, one, I did recording this morning and one of the recordings is uh, working, uh, is rendering on my laptop. I just finished it, but um, I got to the computer just to do the recording. So let me not waste time. Let's go on Twitter. Okay, um, this is, video is gonna be on Appu Team Sussex. I would love to have those videos on the same day that I have on PYTE and Appu Team Sussex come out on the same day, but uh, YouTube usually hold uh, my videos back to review. I could have easily put them live, but because they held them back uh, before I could make money off of them, so I wait until they okay the videos for me to make them live. So I can't really um, put App your team Sussex and PYTE videos that were recorded on the same day out on the same day. And uh, I'm sorry about that. Just go by the date. Okay. So with that being said, let's go on that tweet. And uh, I believe uh, there it is, the Guardian. So Omid tweeted this. He must have knowledge of voicemail interception and other unlawful information gathering techniques and quote when editor of the mirror lawyers acting for alleged phone hacking victim says a new high court filing all right so let's go into that this is what i want to go into and then i'll come back out and read some of the tweets the main thing is is the article and i will put the link in the description for you guys okay so let's get started okay peace morgan must have known about daily mirror phone hacking says lawyers okay victims lawyers are seeking financial record relating to morgan's time and charge of the newspaper okay but i'm saying you god needed to give him a baggage to stop bothering megan because there's a video that i made uh not too long ago where he said when he gets back into whatever job that he get he's gonna start bothering megan i was like god needs to give him a baggage my goodness this guy is evil let's read i'm sorry <laughs> all right let's read pierce morgan quote must have had knowledge of voicemail interception end quote and other unlawful information gathering techniques when he was editor of the daily mirror it has been claimed at the high court lawyers acting for alleged phone hacking victims made the accusation while seeking financial record relating to morgan's time and charge of the newspaper in the early 2000s they claim illegal techniques were used by individuals working for the Mirror during Morgan's time as editor, including in relation to a story exposing Jeremy Clarkson for having an affair. 
Morgan recently signed an enormous contract with Rupert Murdoch's media empire worth tens of millions of pounds to be the face of the forthcoming talk TV channel. I think that was the one where, uh, where I came across some screenshot or something where he said he's gonna, you know, like continue whatever nonsense he was doing um, when he was in the air um, for whatever other station in the UK for uh, bothering Megan every single day. Okay, so I think that's the same thing. He has always strongly denied any knowledge of phone hacking at the Mirror and previously told The Guardian, quote, I've never hacked a phone nor told anybody to hack a phone, end quote. You think he's going to say he, he, he told people to? Come on, it's obvious. Okay, yet the high court filing alleged that during Morgan's time as editor, a Daily Mirror reporter had, quote, been carrying out VMI voicemail interception on Mr. Clarkson and trawling his phone bills, end quote, with the help of a private detective agency. The lawyers allege this information was then used to help paparazzi photographers capture pictures of Clarkson with a woman who was not his wife, which were then published by Morgan and the Mirror. Oh my God, these people. I'm not saying the one who was cheating on the wife is any good, but still, all right? Too wrong to make a right, but I'm just saying, my goodness, the nonsense that's going over there. I'm sorry I'm laughing on that, but my goodness. In legal filing, they insist that it was inconceivable that Morgan would not have known how the story about a prominent celebrity had been um, obtained. One of the key sources is The Insider, Morgan's own book about his time as Mirror Editor. Okay, so they're using his word against him. Okay, quote, Mr. Morgan admitted in The Insider that he approached Mr. Clarkson and must have known the origin of the story and the detail of the UIG, Unlawful Information Gathering, uh, before he did so, end quote. The court filing also states that Southern Investigators, a private detective agency run by former police officers, which was entwined in the case of the murder of Daniel Morgan. Okay, uh, they talk a lot about this on, um, on Twitter. Uh, was it Devin Allen Green, I believe? And uh, there's another one. Aiden, okay, there's another uh, UK uh, journalist uh, that I follow on Twitter that usually puts some really good information out. Uh, I, I've heard them talk about it. All right, so let's get back to that. Uh, run by former police officers, which was entwined in the case of the murder of Daniel Morgan, helped the mirror with the Clarkson story, which Morgan was editor, the private investigators, uh, Morgan was editor, the private investigators issued an uh, invoice for help contacting, quote, confidential sources, end quote, for information on Clarkson. In order to prove the accusation, accusations, the lawyers are seeking disclosure of what payment to private investigators, if any, were signed off by Morgan and Neil, uh, Neil Wallace, the editor of sister title, The Sunday People. Although it is more than 15 years since the start of the phone hacking scandal, which led to the closure of Rupert Murdoch's News of the World, cases continue to make their way to the court system. <laughs> My God. Okay, a dozen of individuals, including Duke of Sussex, are fi still filing new claims. Murdoch's News UK and Rich, uh, the publisher of The Mirror, have collectively paid out hundreds of millions of pounds and damaged and costs since 2006. Okay, so I'll put the link in the description. Like I said, let's go back to Twitter and I'm in a hurry. I want to cover as many uh, tweets, uh, not only tweet the articles as I can. Back to Twitter. Okay, let's see, read some of the comments here. The man has a long history of unscrupulous journalism. I see why he continued to latch himself onto Rupert, quote, phone hacking Murdoch. Uh, why? Only Murdoch will hire him out of a job of nine months. He started off cocky. <laughs> oh, but, oh my God. Jesus Christ, these people have no freaking... <sighs> God, you need to give them a baggage. Okay, I'm thinking he knew was right in the thick of it, all right? PD other black Brits 
ordinary citizen can't escape the unregulated British media allowed to terrorize them. Uh, that's the word that I use. Unfortunately, the way that I see the headline, and if it was true, where he literally said he's going to start you know, bothering Megan. And I compare him where back then you have those other people, uh, Middle Eastern people, you know, the U.S. claim as being terrorists. I pretty much compare him with them because he's doing the same thing. My goodness, I don't even want to show the image. Okay, CNN sent him picking back to the UK with his tail between his legs. The man was liability. Now he has withered down the writing trash to Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, that's where I first came across him on, on CNN. And when I listened to him, I was like, what the hell? And I, ever since I stopped listening to him, there's him and who's the other one? Um, uh, the one who interviewed Princess Diana. Um, what's his name? Uh, Bashir, Martin Bashir. I, I know of Bashir when he interviewed uh, Michael Jackson. And in front of Michael Jackson, he was saying all this nice thing, being very nice. And then afterward, the thing he said afterward with, when Michael Jackson was not in his presence, I was like, what the F? Well, I mean, if he had said whatever he said that got me so disgusting with him in front of Michael Jackson, then Michael Jackson could have easily, uh, you know, pushed back right in front of him. But Michael Jackson was not in his presence. I think it was when he's back in the studio or whatever, and he was summarizing his uh, interview with Michael Jackson. I was like, what the F? And ever since then, I can't stand him. The, the interview was going pretty well. And it's the thing that he said afterward that got me pissed off. I don't even remember what it was, but I know I was really pissed uh, the way he was uh, characterizing uh, Michael Jackson afterward. Care the power of the media barons. That's why he went running back to Murdoch, who now control majority of the British establishment. Okay, what did he do with all the blackmail material he collected? Why wasn't he prosecuted and sent to prison? How did he get employed by ITV? What the link between the answers? Okay, so people's asking and there it is. I mean, <laughs> you see, what is it when they did the, the uh, Met Police did the investigation on uh, Prince Andrew? They claimed that his thing was clean. Uh, it's the same thing. These people all group is their bodies in high position. They tr just turn a blind eyes. Uh, right now, the UK is going to some major things. All right. Once they get to the bottom of it, they must not turn back. Clean house everywhere. That's all I'm saying on this. All right. Jeremy Paxman on Pierce Morgan showing how to hack. Okay. One minute and 39 seconds. Morgan said uh -uh. to all teasing Ulrika. Uh, that he knew what had happened in conversations between her and Spenier and Ericsson. And he went into this mock Swedish accent. Now, I don't know whether he was repeating a conversation that he had heard hmm. or he was imagining this conversation. In fact, to be fair to him, I think we should accept both possibilities that he probably was imagining it it was a rather bad parody um so yeah i do remember it quite and i was quite struck by it because uh, i'm rather wet behind the ears in many of these things i didn't know that that sort of thing went on and indeed when he then turned to me and said have you got a mobile phone i said yes and he said have you got a security setting on the on the message bit of it. I don't think it was called voicemail in those days. Um, I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, he then explained that the way to get access to people's messages was to go to the factory default setting and press either 000 or 1234. Uh, and that if you didn't put on your own code, his words, you're a fool. Wow. Now, I don't. Wow. Okay. That alone can uh, use ag uh, against him. Wow. Whether he's talking about whether he was making this up, was making up the conversation, but it was clearly something that he was familiar with, and I, I wasn't. Wow. My goodness. All right. Said. Uh, Pierce wasn't making this up. If you were in the mobile phone business, 
It was easy to access other people's messages. Just like Jeremy Paxman explained, I tried it in 2000 and it worked. You could also dial into other mobile devices and listen to their messages. Wow. Okay, he knew he's a walking, talking criminal. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's not such a conundrum to debate if an editor will know where his journalists got their information from. That is his job to avert misinformation and lawsuit. Moreover, he would have signed off on an expenditure. Investigators don't come cheap. That is true. Okay, there's another one. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see this one. Good article from Brian Cape Cod. I think I bookmarked this as well. Let me see. I bookmarked this somewhere, Brian Cape Cod. So let's go to it now. Okay, comma, new, he probably authorized it. All right, so by, uh, byline investigate reported long ago, said it wasn't massively shared by other media outlets, wonder why. So while I'm in it, and I believe I bookmarked this, or maybe I read it already, but let's go to it anyway. All right, and I'm done with Twitter. All right, I may have read this, Pierce Morgan phone hacking. I'm copying the link so I could share with you. Okay. Pierce Morgan phone hacking, what even he can't deny. Okay. So this, uh, that's old, uh, 21 January, 2020. I might have read it already. There is a lot of evidence about the former mirror editor and hacking, but how much has he already admitted more than you might think reveal Brian Cape Cod. That's the guy that I follow also on Twitter. Okay, by his own admission, Pierce Morgan knew about illegal voicemail hacking years before it became a public scandal, and he did nothing about it. Though he was a national newspaper editor at the time, he did not expose it, nor did he alert the police or take any step to, ens to ensure that it didn't happen at his newspaper. He simply turned a blind eye. This was a dereliction of his duties as an editor, journalist, and citizen. Worse, if he had done the right thing when he says he first knew about it, thousands of blameless people might not have suffered unwarranted intrusion and press cruelty. It is no exaggeration to say that if Morgan had acted responsibly, merely dow uh, dollars, phone might never have been hacked. Here are the indisputed facts. Okay, on page 279 of his 2005 book, okay, they mentioned this also in that last article. The Insider, which was presented as if it was a diary, Morgan wrote under the date 26 January 2001 that he had been warned that people might be listening to his voicemails. He went on to explain, quote, Okay, that's the text from his book. Apparently, if you don't change the standard security code that every phone comes with, then anyone can call your number. And if you don't answer, tap in the standard four digit code to hear all your messages. I'll change mine just in case, but it makes me wonder how much public figures and celebrities are aware of these little tricks, end quote. Okay, Morgan has accepted vagueness about dates, but when he was questioned about this at the Levison inquiry held in 2011, 2012, into the culture practices and ethics of the British press following the exposure of the phone hacking scandal, he did not seek to, to retreat from it. Therefore, by his own admission, he knew at least in early 2000 how phone hacking was done and that people were at risk. More than five years before the first journalist was arrested for it, he must also known that it was illegal. So what did he do with this knowledge? Okay, turning a blind eye. At that time, Pierce Morgan was editor of the Daily Mirror, a post he had held since 1995 and in which he will remain until his sacking in 2004. The right thing for a national newspaper editor to do surely was to get his reporter to investigate the discriminal practice and then expose it in the public. That will have alert potential victims, deter perpetrators at whichever newspapers they worked, and perhaps even prompted police action just in kind of uh, crusading uh, activity the press tell the public it exists for. Okay, strikingly, that is what had happened in Ireland at the Irish editor of Morgan's newspaper in 1998 
a mirror reporter in Dublin hacked the voicemail of the of then Irish Prime Minister and promptly made the fact public on the front page to demonstrate the dangers. Nothing prevented Morgan from doing something similar. After January 2001, thousands of people were victims of hacking, including victims of crimes and terrorism, people in witness protection, bereaved families, people whose private lives offended the morality of editors, people who were simply witnesses to public events and odd, ordinary people who were related to famous individuals or in relationship with them. At the very least, hundreds of these were victims of Morgan's own newspaper while he was editing it. Oh my goodness this is so wrong and so many levels okay it had uh, if he had chosen to he could have taken timely action to prevent much if not all of this and he might even have uh, prevented the hacking of murderous teenager Milly dollars phone in 2002 I think I know about this it was a young person um, whose parents thought the, uh, the girl was still alive, but in fact, uh, someone was uh, calling the parents with the person's phone. I think that's it. I could be wrong. I may have heard something about uh, this thing. My goodness, this is so cruel and so many level. So many level. So wrong. Okay, let's continue reading. There is no evidence of him doing the other thing we might expect from a senior executive or an important company who is in possession of such knowledge. So far as we know, he took no step to find out whether any of these journalists uh, had hacked mobile voicemails, nor did he ban the practice of this newspaper. He also did not tackle the rampant practice of employing private investigators to get people's mobile numbers so that they could be hacked. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That remind me of, uh, I know Megan has nothing to do with this, but uh, they hiring private investigators to get Megan's social security, do all of this kind of things. This is very cool. This needs to stop. Okay. Had he done any of these things, he might have halt what we now know was a huge and relentless campaign of hacking by the Mirror Papers. Okay. The case of Charlotte Church. Okay. How long is this? Okay. It's almost done. Okay, if for the sake of argument, we were to accept his claim that in 2001-2003, he believed that phone hacking wasn't happening in the Mirror newspapers, although it definitely was, that make Pierce Morgan pass, uh, position all the more perplexing because in that case, he must have believed that it was only uh, his rival who were breaking the law. In the scenario, Morgan will have believed his own newspaper to be in the clear, but his rivals up to their necks and criminality, giving those rivals a significant competitive advantage and getting big stories. Which more reason could he have asked for, uh, for to expose hacking at this stage? Not only will it have been a public service, it will also have been extremely good for business. Yet still Morgan did not do it. And any uh, and by his silence and inactivity, he enabled the hackers. Wow. Merle, that just remind me, what is it? Uh, in this morning uh, tweet, one of the videos that I came across where Bojo make things worse for, uh, I believe is a Iranian uh, Brit dual citizen uh, who was arrested by Iranian and then Bojo made things worse for them for that uh, person is a woman who I think Iranian sent her to five years in prison or something like that and Bojo claimed that uh, uh, she was doing uh, what is it uh, how do you call this uh, like teaching people to do bad things against the Iranian government I forgot the term that they use and uh, and he pretty much uh, uh, make the case for the Iranian to actually jail the, that, uh, that lady. I mean, these people, they're playing both sides. They're playing both sides. And he sound as if he has no idea what he's talking about. Ah, oh, my goodness. I'll put the, uh, the screenshot of uh, the thumbnails of that video. My goodness. Mer into us, why is Foreign Secretary did you say she was teaching journalism in Iran? I've already made clear that that was a mistake. Why did uh, you say it? it? I, I already made clear that that was a mistake. We and know I repeated, it was a mistake. Why did you say it? Many times. Only on the evidence and his own words and without taking any action, 
uh, any account of the great volume of evidence about Morgan and phone hacking that has been brought forward by other people, it seems clear that he should be ashamed. <laughs> These people have no shame. And the thing is that now his head is so deep under the sand. I mean, he came back up. This is why he has to take the job with the other uh, company uh, because no one will hire him. His head is already deep into the sand. He already made a deal with, God, uh, with the devil, so there's no return on this guy. All right? Meanwhile, we need to keep on praying for the uh, the you know innocent people not to pass his uh, cross his path. My goodness, God needs to give him a baggage to deal with. Kev is to leave people alone. Finally, what might Pierce Morgan say if he was forced to account for all this? He might well take the same line he tried at the Levison inquiry that he never really knew about phone hacking and had just heard industry rumors. <laughs> but then again, in this video, that uh, video that I just saw, this guy who was talking about Morgan, uh, who was explaining to him how to hack a phone. And then he did the book and he spoke about it. So he already outed himself. All right, finally, what might Piss Morgan say if, okay, I just read that, uh, uh, he might well take the same line he tried at Levison Inquiry that he never really knew about phone hacking and had just heard industry rumors. The judge didn't believe him. He said on page 613 of his report that the evidence, quote, clearly proved, and quote, that Morgan did know that it was happening, but regardless, that is not uh, a defense. Pierce Morgan was an editor, and the responsibility of editors when they hear rumors about criminal activities is to establish whether or not they are true. Otherwise, they are just covering it up. Okay, Brian Capecott is professor of journalism at Kensington University, London, and the author of The Case of Stephen Lawrence, 1999. All right, maybe I have, uh, okay, I have another one, another tweet, I believe, to go over. Let's see here. Back to Twitter, but this is a different tweet. And I think there's a, there it is, Brian Capecott. Time for this again. Maybe it's the same thing. Okay, Pierce Morgan and phone hacking, what even he can deny, byline time. There is a lot of evidence about the former mirror editor and hacking, but how much has he already admitted? More than you might think, reveal, Brian Cape Cod. All right, Pierce Morgan is the lowest of the law. All right, so let's go to this. That's good because they all related. Is that the same one? Let's see here. Let me go back to the top. Uh, Pierce Morgan phone hacking can deny. Yep, that's the same thing. So I just read it. So look at this. I bookmark it and uh, there it is. The person put it and that's perfect. All right. So I did this. Let's do one more tweet. Let's do one more tweet. One more tweet. And hopefully I get to finish it. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, I think I did this already. Okay. I covered this. Okay, Belfast City Council vote not to, oh, no, it's different. I use the same picture, but it's different. Okay, Belfast City Council vote not to fly Union flag on Prince Andrew's birthday. All right, so I saved this tweet so I could share with you. And that will be the last uh, article I will share. Let's read some of the comments and then go to the article. And then that'll be it. Okay, uh, they even had to waste their time voting on the issue. Pray what was the result, how many I and nays. Okay, they should fly it at half mast. <laughs> Nowhere should be flying a bloody flag for any of them apart from maybe the Queen's official birthday. I won't lose any sleep over it if they even stop doing that. What was it? That was something a couple years ago. While Megan was over there, they were saying something about not flying the uh, the flag for something. I think I believe it was Megan's 39th birthday. It wasn't about the flag. It was about the bell ringing. They were not gonna, I think Westminster Abbey was not ringing the bell for Megan's birthday. I think that's what it was, not the flag. Gets the yet unheard of Zorro snap in Z formation. <laughs> I forgot what it was, and I know I have a video about it, but um, let's see here. That if many will be flying the flag and the sweetie nun's birthday, to be honest. Okay, you really had to vote on this. <laughs> 
the headline is wrong. It was agreed with no vote. All right. So let's go into the article and see what they're talking about. And then after this, that's it. The link will be in the description. Okay. Let's put it as well. Prince Andrew Council agrees not to fly Union flag on birthday. Okay. By Mark Simpson. All right. Uh, Belfast City Council has agreed not to fly the Union flag on Prince Andrew's birthday this month. Instead, con uh, councillors decided that the Union flag should be flown on 1st July to mark the anniversary of the Battle of the Somme. The move was agreed without a vote. Okay, the decision come as the prince faced civil case in America over sexual assault allegation, which he has consistently denied. And this is why, uh, you know, they quickly had to do that Met Police investigator and to completely, he, he didn't do anything wrong, all right, to throw this under the bus. This is for that. They were avoiding this. But thank God, uh, Virginia Goff, we stick to her truth. I mean, she didn't want the case yet. She still have to prove her case, but still, it's worth noting. Okay, the Duke of York's birthday is 19 February and Tuesday was the final full council meeting before then. Uh, SDLP proposal calling for the flag not to be flown in the Prince honor was passed by 12 votes to 6 at the committee meeting last month. Okay, the move to replace Prince Andrew's birthday with an alternate occasion for flying the flag was proposed by the Alliance Councilor Nuela McAllister and seconded by the Democratic Unionist Party Brian Kingston. Miss Allison said it was, quote, the responsible things to do, end quote. All right. Prince Andrew's birthday had been one of the designated days on which the Union flag is flown at City Hall. She also said, and pact of the World War, one battle of the sum on people from Belfast meant it should be marked when possible on, Ju on 1st July. Okay, Mr. Kingston said uh, he sought assurances from other parties that the replacement day will be a permanent arrangement and on the basis was content to back the proposal. He said the DUP was against any reduction in the number of days the Union flag was flown at City Hall. Due to COVID pandemic, the meeting, the meeting of 60 strong council was held online with no counselors in the city hall chamber. Prince Andrew loses military title and use of HRH. Who is Prince Andrew? Okay, I guess this is other articles. So these are other articles. There's link into it. Belfast City Hall has flown the Union flag on designated dates, currently 15 a year since a vote in December 2012 to end its permanent display. Last month, the Duke of York's military title and royal patronages were returned to the Queen. My goodness. All right. So that said, I have two more articles to read. Maybe another time. Maybe two. Oh, there's more. One, two, three. Uh, Belfast City Council. I just read that. Uh, time for this again. Brian K. Court. Okay, so I pretty much read the things. The other things that I have had to do, I have BP, uh, P PPE and something about the su uh, Supreme Court Justice and uh, Jen Saki. Okay, so I probably will do this another day, maybe tomorrow, Saturday, where I have the computer to myself. So I'll record these. So yeah, that's it. And uh, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And uh, that's it. I have to give up the computer. All right. Thanks for watching.
Vanaka. It is a great privilege to be with all of you today. You know, we want we ask for forgiveness and uh, and please come back. for the better. 